Let's talk about the Bitcoin Lightning Network. But first, here's a little fun fact for you. Did you know that Bitcoin can only process around 7 transactions per second? To put this into context, Visa can reportedly handle over 65,000 transactions per second. There's a clear problem here with speed and scalability, and that is where the Bitcoin Lightning Network comes in. How does it solve those problems? Well, let's find out. But before that, make sure to stick till the end to find out some of the major challenges this technology faces, including one to do with the safety of your assets. Don't miss out. All right, what is the Bitcoin Lightning Network? The Lightning Network is a second layer that is added to Bitcoin's blockchain to allow off-chain transactions. It's similar to how flyovers are created to streamline the traffic control system by helping to reduce congestion. Similarly, by taking transactions off the main Bitcoin network, traffic moves much faster and associated fees are lower. It's sort of a two birds, one stone situation, since the Lightning Network does not only attempt to decongest the main network, but is also a solution in itself, such that transactions conducted on it are faster and cheaper than those conducted directly on the core blockchain. So how does the Bitcoin Lightning Network work? To start, the Lightning Network establishes payment channels between pairs of users through which the parties can make or receive payments from each other. The magic happens in how the transactions are processed, which is completely different from the main networks, where every transaction has to be validated. In the Lightning Network, the two parties can send and receive funds endlessly between themselves without informing the main network. So essentially, only the opening and closing of the payment channels are recorded on the main blockchain. The network is maintained by nodes that route payments. To keep the network decentralized, these nodes are run by everyday people or corporations running a program on their computers. Okay, let's take a practical example of the Lightning Network in action. Say Arnold buys an energy drink at the same shop daily on his way to the gym. Since the shop accepts Bitcoin as payment, Arnold has the option of making a small transaction every day for each energy drink. That is, if he has no problem waiting for 10 minutes to over an hour for his transactions to be validated and of course paying the associated high fees. Instead, Arnold chooses to use the Lightning Network. He opens a payment channel with the shop and deposits $50 worth of Bitcoin in it. The shop, on the other hand, will create an invoice, which is often represented using QR codes. So whenever Arnold wants to pay, he simply scans the QR code with his Lightning wallet. So now his transactions with the shop are now instant and way cheaper. What happens in the background is that the Lightning Network creates smart contracts between Arnold and the shop. This set of codes automatically fulfills the contract between the two once some preset requirements are met. A requirement, for example, could be Arnold paying the correct amount for his energy drink, after which the contract will be fulfilled without a third party. Another interesting thing about the Lightning Network is that it does not need to create pairs between all the users. For instance, if Arnold, who already has a channel with the shop, has another channel with Alex, however Alex does not have a channel with the shop, Funds can still be freely transferred between Alex and the shop via Arnold. Basically, the network finds the shortest route between you and the shop through others in the network. The advantages of the Lightning Network are obvious, including faster and cheaper transactions. Also, it enables micropayments in a way that was never possible before. But what about some of the challenges that it faces? Challenge number one is security. Since both parties have to be online and use their private keys to sign in, it's possible that the computers storing the private keys may be compromised and the coins stolen. However, the Lightning Network supports cold storage, whereby the digital wallet is not connected to the internet. Speaking of no internet connection, going offline in the Lightning Network may come with its own problem, known as the fraudulent channel close. Say that Alice and Ruth have a channel on the Lightning Network. For some reason, Ruth goes offline for a while and Alice decides to close the channel. There will be time to contest the closing of the channel, 
However, since Ruth has been gone for a while, this time might expire, leading to Alice pocketing the funds. The other security risk may be caused by a malicious attack that aims to make the network congested. This may happen when a malicious party creates numerous channels and causes them to expire at the same time. Remember we mentioned that when a channel is closed, it is broadcast to the core blockchain. So due to the congestion, the capacity of the block may be overwhelmed and the malicious party may use this opportunity to steal from users who aren't able to withdraw their funds. The second major problem arises due to the volatility of cryptocurrencies. Like any other cryptocurrency, Bitcoin is volatile. While the Lightning Network tries to encourage the use of Bitcoin in everyday life, its volatility is one of the things that hinders its mainstream adoption. Say a school and a stationary supplier agree on a certain amount of Bitcoin to be paid in a certain time frame. When the school finally decides to pay the supplier, the price of Bitcoin may have already dropped by 15%. Since the school's income may be in fiat, they'll have to convert it to Bitcoin to cover the remaining 15%. This may come with its own risks, for instance, unintentionally spending more than they intended. Also, the Lightning Network does not completely solve Bitcoin's transaction fee problem. For one, opening a payment channel requires both participating parties to make an initial transaction, which is done on-chain. There are also routing fees to transfer payments between channels. While these fees are low to attract more users, they pose a new problem as the nodes might not find the incentives to facilitate the transactions attractive enough. That said, Arcane, a leading cryptocurrency market analysis firm, released a report detailing the adoption of Bitcoin's Lightning Network powered by OpenNode, a Lightning payment processor. The report showed the tremendous growth of the Lightning Network. For instance, this graph illustrates Lightning payments minus trading-related services. We can see that commerce payments and personal transfers have seen a significant increase and are on a continuous upward slope. So as usage of this network increases, it is likely to evolve even more. While the Lightning Network may not be the solution to all of Bitcoin's problems, it will still have an effect on it. And this innovative network is one of the many necessary steps to drive mainstream adoption of Bitcoin, just as the creator, Satoshi Nakamoto, envisioned. Do you use or plan to use the Bitcoin Lightning Network? Let us know in the comments. Remember to like, subscribe, and follow us on all our socials for future alpha. See ya!